I'm Steve, and you may not know Kieran. He's part of the Link team, and you can't see Sam, but he's the cameraman. And uh, we're going to try to answer some of the questions that you've sent us on our 90-day challenge. And I hope that you are all working hard on the 90-day challenge. And so we gathered some of the questions. There were a lot of questions. Some of them I've kind of grouped them together, or we've grouped them together. And we thought it would be interesting if we kind of had a question and answer. So yep. Kieran's going to ask. And uh, by the way, Kieran's working on Spanish, and so is Sam. We Hola. Will see. Hola, there you go. <laughs> what were some of the questions? Okay, so the first one here um, was, uh, how do you learn vocabulary so that you don't get overwhelmed and forget the original vocabulary that you learned? Okay, first of all, you do forget the vocabulary that you learned. That's a given. In fact, it's good to forget the vocabulary. If you forget it and relearn it and forget it again and relearn it, that's how you're going to retain it. So I read and listen. And of course, the first time I come across a new word, I link it, it's now converted to yellow, and then I'll see it again. And I not only do I forget the meaning, I forget that I ever saw the word before. Hmm. And so it's this process of engaging with the content, forgetting, relearning, forgetting, and that's how you learn. So that's really not a problem. Hmm. That's, okay. yeah, that's how I see that. All right, so the second one is, where do you find really good starting content for Polish, Japanese, Mandarin, German, and Korean. Okay, these were obviously five different questions that I received. It started with Polish. A number of Polish people told me uh, that I shouldn't do this Mandel Gdanski, that it's a 19th century novel and it's not very good. And I must admit it was very difficult. So I was happy to get off that. I discovered in our library we had some content from real Polish. And I started doing that, and it, the material there is, is phenomenal, and I've been in touch with Piotr, and I will talk more about that in my next video. But Japanese, Mandarin, German, Korean, I mean, you know, I'm not studying, I'm studying Korean right now. Everyone has to look. You have to look for your own content, things that are, you know, of interest to you. I can't give you any answers. Uh, Korean, I searched some podcasts, which I had... Uh, you know, transcribe. Mm -hmm. uh, part of language learning is being an explorer. Uh, you have to find your own resources. So uh, other than that, you can come on link. We have content in our library, audio and text, yep. and you can use those. They're available f for free download if you don't use all of the link uh, functionality, which of course I recommend you do. It's more effective. Uh, and you can ask on our forum, but you've got to look for it. Right. Sorry. No, that's good. <laughs> So the third question is, um, we actually have a course on Link called Who Is She? Right. Which is in Polish. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the users was asking is, how did you do the Who Is She course without any grammar? Right. And uh, do we learn grammar when we have very few words? Right. So there were two questions there. Uh, okay. Obviously, when I'm doing Polish, I've already done Russian, Czech, Ukrainian. Mm. So I have a sense of how you know, Slavic languages work in right. terms of the grammar. I'm not too fussed about how the endings in Polish are different from the endings in Czech or Russian. It doesn't matter. It doesn't prevent me from understanding what I'm listening to. Okay. So there'll be words that I don't know. I look up those words mm -hmm. and the grammar doesn't bother me. At some point, I will go back in there and try to nail down better, you know, the specific, uh, you know, Polish endings. But for the time being, it doesn't prevent me from understanding the story. Uh, and this other person asked me, in fact, he was studying Slovak and he said he only had a few hundred words and he can't remember the grammar. Of course you can't remember the grammar. I think someone else said he has trouble with the endings in German. Don't sweat it. As Piotr of Real Polish says, we learn subconsciously. And so you have to expose yourself to the language. And if you learn it subconsciously by experiencing it, you will have a much better grasp of the language than if you try to remember rules. And pretty soon there's so many rules and exceptions, you forget the rules and stuff. Right. Learn it through gradually exposing yourself to it and don't worry about the grammar until you're so curious about the grammar, you go back in, you look it up, and then it starts to, you know, hmm. stick. Yeah, that's a great point. Okay, uh, next question. Do you use music to learn languages? People often, people ask me that, the answer is no. <laughs> uh, first of all, not the music. I presume they mean the words of songs. Right. If you are, like, the key in language learning is content. Content is king. If you're interested in songs, that's a great way to learn because then you start singing the songs and mm. so forth. I just am not that interested. I'm interested in other things. So whatever you're interested in, go for it. Content is king or queen. Okay. 
Um, next question. What is your daily language learning routine and how much time does one need to spend a day learning the language? You know, there is no rule. I think if you're serious, you should spend an hour a day at least. And, but there's no upper limit. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I do. But 70% of that is listening because I can listen in my car. I can listen while preparing breakfast. I can listen all kinds of you know, right. different places. So listening is 75% of it. Uh, I don't really have a routine. Again, I like to do what I feel like doing. So uh, I might uh, get on my, I have a stepper at home. I mm -hmm. get on with my iPad and I read through an, uh, 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 you know, a lesson in, in iLink on my mm -hmm. iPad. Uh, then if I follow after the stepper, I might lift a few weights. Then I'll be listening while I'm doing that. Okay. Uh, so it all adds up. I grab some time here, some time there. Yeah. I, I, there is no routine. All right. And what do you do when you're demotivated or not interested or you're not feeling like you're getting any, anywhere, making any progress? You know, there were a number of questions like this. Uh, one person said, you know, I've been living in Spain and, and I'm not motivated and my Spanish is no good. And another person said, uh, yeah, Japanese. I, I know a number of people had this problem. Mm -hmm. First of all, don't tell yourself that you're not doing well. Okay. okay? That's a bad message. Whatever you're able to do in the language is good because that's better than zero, right? So yeah. you are, lots of people are just unilingual. So if you have some knowledge of the language, you're able to say a few things, you're already good, but you'd like to get better, all right? Mm -hmm. Here again, in my experience, the key is content. Do stuff that is interesting and enjoyable. If you like songs, go for songs. If you like movies, go for movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say, uh, I. In my Polish, as I said, I started into this uh, Mandel Gdanski. It was very difficult, very dry, a little discouraging. And then I discovered Piotr's stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just opened up this tremendous door for me. So you've mm -hmm. got to find, and I can't tell you what's good for you. You've got to find the content that turns you on. And then once the, uh, the process of learning is enjoyable, well, you don't care so much. Am I making progress? You're not measuring right. yourself yeah. against something I didn't achieve that. Forget it. You're enjoying the language. You're enjoying the songs. You're enjoying this. You have this sense of, wow, I listened to this. I didn't understand it uh, three months ago, but now I understand it. And I know from experience, and you have to take my word for it, if you continue to expose yourself to the language, listening and reading, the brain is going to do a lot of it by itself. Hmm. I, we can in next we, over the next few weeks. I'll talk you about talk to you about things that you can do to help your brain along. But the brain is going to learn as long as you keep enjoying the language. That's good. Very good. All right. Last question: How do you avoid translating into your own language? You can't, at least initially. But again, because the whole process is one of the brain getting used to the language. Mm -hmm. If you do this naturally, subconsciously, as Piotr says in, in, in Warsaw there, uh, gradually the brain will start seeing the text in the target language as meaning okay. directly. Mm -hmm. It won't need to translate. But it's a gradual process. Initially, you're translating almost all of it. And then your uh, certain phrases now automatically have meaning in the target language. And then this just becomes a larger and larger percentage of, of what you're dealing with. So again, uh, I, I think I did videos about being patient. Don't get impatient. You know, I'm still translating. Yeah, you're still translating. Keep going and you'll translate less and less. And more of it will be instant meaning in the target language. All right. Okay, we went beyond the two minutes, I think. But well, there you go. There's a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit longer. So just to finish off here, keep sending your questions in. Once a week, I answer questions. And uh, I'll do another video where I will talk about my experiences and, and uh, some of the things that I'm discovering yeah. on the 90 Day Challenge.